Today marks the first full day in bankruptcy for Stockton, California, the largest U.S. city ever to file under the federal code. Among its obligations, massive pension commitments for city employees. And Stockton is not alone. Across the U.S., unfunded pension debts may total as much as $4.4 trillion. That's according to a report last year from Congress's Joint Economic Committee. Our next guest warns of a coming national pension crisis that could bankrupt many state and local governments. Josh Rao is a professor of finance at Stanford's Graduate School of Business. Uh, professor Rao, welcome. Good to have you with us. So many questions here, so little time. Uh, I want to ask first, though, about what is likely now to happen to Stockton's pensioners. Are they likely in this reorganization to be treated, as the judge said yesterday, as just another, quote, garden variety creditor right there along with bond? holders and will they likely have to take a haircut? Well, there are two questions. One is whether legally that will be the case. And I think that based on what the judge is saying in the case, there is some reason to believe that, in fact, yes, CalPERS, the California Public Employee Retirement System, will be viewed as another creditor in the, the capital structure of, of, of creditors to, to Stockton, California. But we also have to look at the political reality of this. Uh, in Vallejo, another city in California that recently did a bankruptcy, they were also entitled legally to change pensions, but they didn't. Why didn't they? Well, at the end of the day, you know, the public employee organizations had to agree to the, to the reorg, and CalPERS had to agree to the reorganization. And those are powerful political groups. And at the end, it just wasn't politically feasible to cut the pensions. So are you saying, Josh, that this isn't a case of one size fits all? I mean, there are other states and cities that, um, you know, will be in this uh, pension bomb, uh, to use your word. Um, so, you know, how is this all going to play out? Well, look, not all states, uh, not all cities have access to Chapter 9 bankruptcies because not all states allow it. And state-level governments, they have no Chapter 9 bankruptcy. They, they have no legal way of restructuring either their general obligation bonds or their, or their, their pension obligations. So it is going to play out differently in every state. What's common state by state is that in every state in the U.S., we are miscosting, undercosting pension promises. And that's really at the root of the problem. You know, there are some states that are in better shape than others because they've made fewer promises, or they've made smaller promises, or they haven't uh, paid uh, public employees excess amounts. But the, the fact is that all states are undercosting this deferred compensation. And it's been the way that state and local governments have gotten around balanced budgets. If you pay in deferred comp, you can say, look, I'm not going to pay you as much today. I'm going to And that future becomes someone else's problem. Unfortunately, that problem is now coming due uh, sooner than we'd like. And haven't those municipalities and states uh, sort of uh counted on higher returns in those pension funds uh, that, are, that are likely to uh, take place. Well, that, that, that's a big part of the undercosting, which is that, you know, when a state or local government promises they're going to pay a, a, a policeman or a fireman or a <clears> teacher <throat> a pension in retirement, they assume the, balance, the budget is balanced as long as the money that they're setting aside is going to grow at roughly seven and three quarters or eight percent expected returns every year. And if you look at financial models, that's actually not a very likely scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, a kind of standard set of assumptions would tell you that that might come true maybe 30 per, in 30 percent of the future states of the world, 30 percent of the time. So, so we're really budgeting towards an outcome that you know, really is not that likely to, 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 to come true. And we, if it doesn't come true, then that means that taxpayers are going to be on the hook. And also, we're going to see more situations like we have in Stockton of the, the cities trying to use all of the tools at their disposal to try to restructure these, these obligations. And in the end, it's going to be a, a battle for scarce resources uh, among recipients of public services, right. taxpayers, uh, and pensioners. We know of Stockton's troubles. We know of the troubles in other California municipalities. Very briefly, what other states or municipalities are on the short list of ones that are likely to face these kinds of problems. Illinois is, is facing them now. So in Illinois, you have the state funds, which are 39 percent funded, even assuming that every dollar that goes into the funds is going to earn seven and three quarters percent. So, so that, that, that's really a very, very stark contrast. You know, if you look in Europe, where they do these funds, I mean, they're, they're, they're measuring them at much more conservative rates, and they're, they're you know, 95 percent funded. Uh, so I mean, I mean, this is a really serious situation. And then within Illinois, you have the city of Chicago, mm -hmm. which has just been under-contributing right. to, to pensions and underfunding the pensions. Basically, right. Chicago and Illinois have have both been sort of writing their own rules about pension funding in order not to have to run balanced budgets, in order to be able to, to spend money I'm, now that uh, that they don't really have, and I'm, to put the problem off I'm on the future I'm afraid we have to leave it there, They're Mr. not going to be able to do that for that much longer. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We have a little time pinch here, and we appreciate your being with you. We'll have you back with us again soon. Thank you very much.